You're listening to Newsday on the BBC World Service. Let's take you now to a controversy happening in India. A group of conservative Hindu academics uh, have forced Penguin Books uh, in India to pulp all remaining copies of a controversial history book. The Shishka, Bakao and the Lohan Committee objected to the portrayal of the Hindu religion in the book The Hindus and Alternative History. Now, a lawyer for the group who filed a civil suit, her name is Monica Arora, believes the book is historically wrong. In India, as in the world, we are governed by the rule of law. I was shocked to hear Wendy Doniger's comments, as I saw in the newspapers in India also, that law is the biggest villain. Come on, if I insult you, if I defame you, if I abuse you, it's a valid legal remedy available. Well, big debate on Twitter, hashtag Wendy uh, Doniger, if you want to uh, go and tap into that. The writer herself, who is an American, says despite the public outcry, her book isn't offensive to all Hindus. It's a strong book, so it's going to have people who love and people who hate it. Serious book about um, the history of Hinduism, and there's hardly any sex in it anywhere. It's madness. All, all of the claims are, are, ma- are absolutely ludicrous. Well, the Penguin India's actions has prompted widespread criticism. Uh, Indians are concerned that some religious groups are stifling free speech. And among them is the Booker Prize winner, Arundhati Roy, the author of The God of Small Things. She's written to Penguin India, as she told me. What I said was that I, I, I just couldn't believe that they had done this, you know, because we're not talking <clears throat> about a state ban. We're not talking about a fatwa. We're not even talking about a court order. We are talking about a, 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 a grand publishing company like Penguin, sort of genuflecting before and doing an out-of-court settlement with some fly-by-night uh, fanatics who are connected to a very big network of uh, right-wing fundamentalists. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, it marks a, a, a shift, a very dismaying shift in in submitting to this growing uh, atmosphere of intolerance where really the censorship has been outsourced to the goon squads, you know, and and, uh, we are all extremely vulnerable because, you know, the the elections are coming and um, people think, though I I don't necessarily think so, but I think it could be that we have a right-wing Hindu government in power and people have already started uh, crawling when they're being asked to bend. You say that everybody could be affected. Do you feel vulnerable? Extremely so. I mean, I, I'm already vulnerable. You know, every time I, I have a book launch, they come and smash things and they've said that uh, they will never let me speak. And so, you know, I, I'm very used to this. But for your own publisher to, to just collapse in this way is, is a terrible thing. You know, Penguin has watched my book launches where people have come and smashed the furniture and it has stood by me. But now, clearly, I can't expect that any longer. You know, you may not have read this because it just uh, was released just before I came on air, a statement from Penguin Books India. And they say it believed in every individual's right to freedom of thought and expression, but had an obligation to respect the laws of the land in which it operated, however intolerant and restrictive those laws might be. I'd be so interested to hear your response to that. Well, there hasn't been any court order. You know, the settlement was signed before they even went up to the Supreme Court or anything. So I don't know. Uh, Of course, there is a problem with uh, very strange and ambiguous laws, but they didn't fight it to the end, you know. So you think they should have fought it to the end, I understand. But what about that point that they say, an obligation to respect the laws of the land in which it operates? No, I mean, if there was a court order, then I Mm. can see an obligation, but there hasn't been a court order. You know, uh, uh, the law is open to fighting it to the top court, right? I mean, a law is interpreted. If you, I mean, you you said that these people were Hindu academics. No, they are not academics. And their uh, interpretation of Hinduism is is insane. I think even, uh, you know, Narendra Modi would be embarrassed at their interpretation of it. Will you stay with Penguin India? 
I'll think about it because actually, uh, you know, a, a book of mine is coming out pretty soon. It's actually an introduction to, to, to something which is not being published by Penguin, but it's a book-length introduction, and I keep thinking, oh, my God, if Penguin was publishing it, they would have dropped it by now, you know, because it's going to be controversial, and surely, you know, some insane outfit will be. What's the name it. of the book? It's an introduction to um, to the writings of uh, a, a great Indian intellectual called Ambedkar, B. R. Ambedkar, the, the the Dalit, the untouchable Dalit man who then rose to to be the person who supervised the writing of the Indian Constitution and a great adversary of Mahatma Gandhi's. And that is Aaron Dati Roy, the author of The God of Small Things, among many others, uh, speaking to you today, just uh, in the past few minutes.